Welcome back everyone. In the next few lectures, we are going to talk about lean. But unlike other lean lectures, we are going to talk about something more fundamental and basic about this methodology. And today, what we are going to talk about is the basics, basic of the basics. We are going to talk about metrics, more specifically, actionable metrics. The reason we do this whole thing, design thinking, agile, lean, is we like to come up with a structure that you can work on something effectively and then learn something properly and then keep iterating so you can make something, come up with something that is actually marketable. If you want to do that, you need to be able to track what you are doing, your performances. That's why actionable metrics that concept is very, very important. It's not that difficult, it's very simple process as well. What you need to do is you need to come up with the metrics that actually matter, that actually mean something. And then you need to measure them properly. And then you need to tie the metrics to people so you can understand why they did what they did. And then you have to tie them to an action. Okay, let's talk about this again. If you are actually following the metrics that do not mean anything, then you won't be able to do anything. You won't be able to learn anything. That's why you need to come up with the proper metrics. And you need to be able to measure them properly. If you measure the wrong metrics, then you won't be able to learn anything either. Now the metrics, they can only tell you what they did. You cannot tell, you cannot understand why they did what they did. That's why you need to tie them to people. And then you need to somehow find a way to your actions. So come up with the right metrics, measure them properly, tie them to people so you can understand better, and then tie them to your action. Those are four steps that you need to keep in mind. So let's begin. There's a concept about vanity metrics and actionable metrics. Vanity metrics pretty much mean numbers or stats that look good on paper, but don't really mean anything important. People have been following these vanity metrics a lot. And I'm pretty sure some of you have done this already as well. What you need is actionable metrics. Stats tied to specific and repeatable tasks you can improve and to the goals of your business. Now, what is vanity metrics and what is actionable metrics? Mm, sometimes there's a gray area, so I'll just give you a couple of examples here. When you're talking about number of conversions, as in number of something that users do, yeah, it looks like it means something, but it doesn't really mean anything. So out of how many? If you say, uh, 12 people bought my product, that's good, but out of how many? I went to a trade show and I signed two deals. That's good out of how many people that you talked with. So we care more about conversion rate than number of conversions. We care more about engagement rate than number of social followers. If they just keep looking at your product and don't do anything about it, it just doesn't really mean anything. So vanity metrics are the ones that look good on paper, but that do not really mean anything. Actionable metrics that you can actually use that information to tie that information to your actions. So vanity versus actionable, very important. Now, it's how these metrics are measured that make them actionable versus not. Okay, can this metric lead to a course of action or help make a decision? Can we reproduce this metric purposely? Is this metric reliable? Now, can we actually measure this? Or do we have to come up with our in our head to just produce random numbers. Is this reliable? Is this tested? Can somebody verify it? All these little things make good metrics, bad metrics. So let's say this again, vanity metrics, bad. Although they look good on paper, they don't really mean anything. Actionable metrics, if you can tie your action to this information, 
oh, wait a minute, this is what's going on, we have to do something. That's a good matrix, that's what we call actionable matrix. Now you need to measure the right macro. This is a kind of a concept that you may not be able to grasp right at this moment. But later on, when you are done with this lecture, you will have a better understanding about this. You need to, have, you need to identify the key matrix. And the, that metric, you have to map this matrix to actions. Um, Here's the thing, when you're creating this lean canvas, there is this section, matrix, key matrix, pirate matrix, whatever you want to call it. You have to follow the, follow the key matrix to measure the performances, right? What do you really want to look at? There are dozens and dozens of matrices that you can actually follow. They all mean something, they're important. But can you actually track all of them? Maybe not. So what are, the metric, what are the metrics that you can use, that you can follow, that you can track right now that matter to you? So you need to think about where you are in the stage of entire corporate development and what the, metric, the, the metrics that you want to follow, what are they? You need to identify them now so you can create a proper lean canvas and go on with your development process. Now, think about this. Why do we create Lean Canvas? We talked about this before. One, business plans. Too long, too complicated, too difficult to read. So nobody reads it anymore, and that doesn't help you at all. So if you take that down to a little bit lower level, what you can say is something that's difficult to read or use it's not going to be used. You need to be able to read it, understand it, and revise it and make it better. The simpler, the better. The same principle applies to matrix and report. The simpler, the better. The reports that are hard to understand simply won't get used. And you are not going to use it either. So you need to come up with something that is simple enough so you can understand it and keep using it. That's why people keep using funnel reports. It's a very old concept and somehow, some way, that is very effective even today. So you start with a certain number of people and uh, you get them to a certain level and then you get them to uh, like your product and you get them to pay for your product. So this funnel reports, that works and that's why people use it a lot. We start with this number and then the conversion rate is this and the next to the next level, the conversion rate, uh, conversion rate is this, and you just keep going from there. Only problem, you can see the number, you can see the conversion rate, but you cannot really tell why that happens. Okay, uh, let's rewind a couple of minutes. What did I say? If it is a good matrix, you can tie your action to this information, right? When you see the funnel reports, although they mean something that's really good, and uh, you may be able to say, okay, we need to do something about this. Once we get to uh, retention level, all these people actually buy our product. We need to get them to this level. Okay, that's good. But how do you, pe how do you get people, customers to that level? Acquisition, activation, how to get there? So you gather people around. You make them test your product. And then somehow they have to keep coming back and try to use it and then the, you know what? I, I wanna use it, I wanna pay for it. So after that, it's not a problem. But once you get these people, customers in front of you, when they test it and they have to come back and if they don't come back, if the conversion rate is like 2%, something's wrong and you don't really know why or how, and therefore, you don't know how to fix it. That's why we tie that information to people or the period this month, next month, or teenagers versus 40 to 50. That's why we do this cohort analysis. So we can tie that information to people. 
Metrics can only tell you what users did. They cannot tell you why. Now, a key requirement for making metrics actionable is that you should be able to tie them to actual people. That's why I do cohort analysis. That is what we want to say today. Nothing more, nothing less. It's a very simple concept. What you need to do is follow these four principles. Vanity versus actionable. Just choose the metrics that matter. Two, measure them properly. Three, tie them to people. And last, tie them to your action. If you keep that in mind, we are not going to have that many problems talking about the topic that we are going to in the next lecture. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.